All right, the first question is this one. The problem says which of these points have the largest absolute value of bending stress? The moment is about the y-axis. It means that the axis of interest in this problem is in the vertical direction. And because all of these points are having the same distance from the centroid, they are all having the same bending stress. So sigma b, as we know, is mc over i. m and i are constant for the section. The only variable would be c. And in this case, all of them are actually having zero stress because they are all located at the neutral axis. The other one is this one, which is a typical uh, bending problem for non-symmetric sections. The magnitude of the moment is given. The moment of inertia and the location of the centroid are also provided. So in this case, the centroid to the bottom is given as y bar. Because you had different numbers, I'm just trying to solve this problem symbolically. We just need to plug that into this equation. Sigma is mc over i. Again, m and i are provided, and we just need to plug the values for c. So the problem simplifies to what is the c value. So distance of centroid to h would be y bar minus thickness of the bottom flange, and distance to top, which is equal to c k, is h minus y bar. So that's it. I plug the numbers for these two and plug that there. On the other side, we also need to determine sine. For determining sine in these problems, we need to remember that rule for stresses and bending moments. Positive bending moment would produce tension on the bottom, compression on top. Again, we talked about that before, but let me show that here again. So this is the way that the beam would bend because of positive bending moment. So this is positive bending moment. And it would compress the top portion of beam as we see, and it would put the bottom part on tension. On the other side, the moment that is negative would bend the beam like this. So this is the negative moment, and it would produce compression on the bottom and tension on top like this. And again, we talked about it before. One way to remember this is if you like bonus points, if you like positive points, this is the way that you can memorize this. So this is the positive moment, smiley face, and this is the penalty, so deducting point. This is the way that you can memorize the direction of the, uh, like the bending and how they are producing stresses. In the case that I have, it is negative, and negative would produce um, tension on top, compression on the bottom. So sigma k would be positive, sigma h would be negative. Any question for this problem? All right, now let's talk about this problem, which is the composite problem. The centroid, we don't need to determine that because that is symmetric centroid would be on the half of the height of the section. But for moment of inertia, the problem specified to determine that in case that we transform that into wood. It means that we need to expand the dimension of that steel plate like this on both sides. So that would be the transformed section. The, we don't change the height of the section, so the height would be 4. The initial thickness is T, and the thickness after transformation would be N multiplied by T. What is the N factor that I need to use here in this problem? We are going to expand steel to make it equivalent to wood, and N should be larger than 1. So in that case, I'm going to divide modulus of elasticity of steel over wood and determine the N factor. Once we determine that, we need to determine the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia for this section is very simple, actually, because the centroid for all of these three sections are at the same location, equivalent to the location of the centroid of the entire section. And if I want to determine the moment of inertia for the entire section, we know that it is I sub C plus A D squared, but D is zero in all of those. So it means that I need to simply determine moment of inertia of the centroid for each part. And in that case, I can write it like this. For the wood, for the first part, 
moment of inertia is 3 by 8 cubed over 12 because those are base and height. For one of these steel sides, which is transformed into wood, the width of the section is n multiplied by the thickness. That's the only variable that we had. Height of section is a 4 divided by 2, and that would give you the moment of inertia for one side. We are going to multiply that by 2 because there are two steel plates on the side. So that would be the moment of inertia, right? Yes. Okay, now we have to always change the width of the section, not the height of the section. Because if we change the height, look at the equation that we have. Height is related with the order of 3 with the moment of inertia. So it is increasing that way more than what we want it to be increased. So we have to always change the width of the section in every case. Good question. Okay, once we determine the moment of inertia, we need to determine bending stress. Bending stress is simply say we want to determine that for wood that would be moment which is given multiplied by c for wood divided by i and i is the one that we just calculated so moment is given and i just need to determine what is c for this case and what is c value for wood it's half of the height of uh, wood uh, element in this case, which is 8 over 4, sorry, 8 over 2, which is 4, and that's it. If I want to determine the stress, that would be m multiplied by distance, the farthest distance steel from the centroid divided by i, but I should not forget the n factor because this is the material that we have transformed. So n factor is calculated before, and distance to steel would be half of the height of steel, which is 4 over 2, which is 2 inches. And plug the numbers, you would get the answer for this part. Any question for this problem? All right. Now we get to the last problem and the second problem, which are somehow... The second problem is a conceptual part of that. The last problem is doing that in details and doing the calculations. So I'm going to solve that problem in details. Look at this beam. Um, an L-shaped column is subjected to an eccentric force which magnitude is 360 kilonewton. The height of column is given to be 850 millimeter. Again, the numbers are different, so you, can, you would have different numbers, but the process would be the same. C value, which is distance of force to the edge of the column, in my case is 185 millimeter. The thickness of the beam, the dimension that we see here is 180 millimeter. And the depth of the beam, or B, is 260 millimeter. And I want to determine where is the point where the normal stress is zero. Like the case that the bending stresses and axial stresses together would give me zero stress at that point. And I want to determine the like, distance of that from, from the center. All right. So in this case, I need to, uh, it's a very typical combined loading problem. I need to first move this force to the center of the section and determine the moment and the axial force acting on the section. So moving the force to the uh, center of the column would produce a moment the axial force in the column is equal to the applied force, which in this case is 360 kilonewton, which is 360,000 newton. Okay? Now for moment, we know moment is force multiplied by eccentricity. Force is given, and I need to determine what is the eccentricity. Eccentricity is distance of this force to the centroid, which is C plus half of this thickness, or A over 2. So I'm going to say C plus A over 2. So I'm going to plug that here, 360,000 Newton multiplied by C, which is 185, plus half of A, which is 180 over 2. And that would give me the magnitude of moment, 99 million newton millimeter. 
So that's a moment and axial force. In the second step, we are going to determine the stresses produced by each of those. So for stress caused by axial force, stress would be uniformly distributed on the section. I'm going to call it sigma A, and stress is force over area. Force is 360,000 Newton, and area is simply A multiplied by B. So this stress would be 7.692 megapascals, and we know that that would be compressive because the force is compressing the column. So I'm going to say compression here. All right, now let's go and calculate the stress produced by bending moment. For bending moment, we have sigma b as mc over i. All right, before moving on, let's calculate how much is i. To be able to determine what is i, we need to determine what is the axis of interest. So look at the axis that we have in this problem. Let me zoom into this figure and show you that in details. The horizontal axis, if you look at the beam from side view, the horizontal axis is x, the vertical axis is z, and the axis that is perpendicular to this plane is shown by y. If we look at this column, like the cut section of that column from top, we would see this rectangular shape, which the dimension of that would be A along the x-axis and B along the y-axis. Now we need to see which one is base, which one is height. We need to use the right-hand rule again for solving this problem. So put the right hand along the direction of force P, downward. Palm should face the direction that you need to move it. So it is like this. It is facing to the left. The thumb shows the direction of the moment, right? So which of these three axes would be the direction where the moment is acting on. The thumb would be outward from the plane, so that would be y-axis. It means that the axis of interest is y. So base would be parallel to that, which is b. Height would be perpendicular to that, which is a. This is the way that we can determine which one is base and which one is height. So i would be b a cubed over 12, which is 126.4 million millimeter to the fourth. Now for C, what, what should I use as C value here? The axis of interest is Y. C would be the farthest distance from that axis, which is A over 2. Okay, if I calculate stress, that would be 70.51 megapascals. All right, this is not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for how much our maximum stress is, but I'm looking for where is the point where there is no stress at that point. To be able to determine that, let me draw the stress distribution on the section and try to explain that here. So in this case, we know that stress that is produced by axial force would be uniform. The magnitude of that is calculated. For bending moment, it is zero at the neutral axis, which is the centroid, and it is maximum on the sides. But if we add them together on one side, they are going to be added. On the other side, they are going to be subtracted. In this particular case, following the direction of the moment, the left side would receive compression, the right side would receive tension. So they are going to be added on the left, subtracted on the right. Stress on the left of the beam is sigma A plus sigma B. And again, I'm just looking, I'm just plugging the magnitude of those. And we would get stress on the left as 78.21 megapascals and stress on the right would be sigma a minus sigma b because they are opposite to each other for this particular problem i don't care about sign i just want to look what search for the magnitude of those and that one would give me 62.82 now how can i determine the location of this zero stress here. We know that the, the thickness of the beam is A. Assume that the location of the zero stress from the left side is X, the remaining would be A minus X. And these two triangles are similar to each other, so I can say that 
stress on the left divided by this edge is equal to stress on the right side divided by a minus x. So using the similar triangles, we say sigma on the left divided by x is equal to sigma on the right divided by a minus x. And because we have x on both sides, I want to simplify that more. We know that in fraction, we can add the nomination, nominator and the denominator, and the ratio would be the same. So that would be equal to left plus right. And if I add the denominator together, I would end up with a. So from that, we can determine that x would be equal to sigma left divided by sigma right plus sigma left multiplied by a. And if I plug the numbers here, I would get 99.82 millimeter. That is distance to the left side. And if I want to determine distance middle of the section to the centroid, I would simply subtract half of the thickness of the section from this. So that would be a x minus a over 2. And that is 9.82.